ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module is a great microcontroller made by Espressive Systems. It has a powerful dual-core Extensa LX6 microprocessor that runs at a fast 240 MHz. But the question is, how many of you have actually used the dual cores of the ESP32 or have done multitasking on the ESP32? I'm sure 85% of you haven't used the dual cores of the ESP32 or done any multitasking. First of all, let me tell you that you should not mix up FreeRTO's dual-core programming and multitasking. Although dual-core programming and multitasking in ESP32 are related to FreeRTO's but not exactly the same thing, FreeRTO's is a real-time operating system that helps run multiple tasks at the same time, even when they share the same resources. To be more specific, Free RDOs manages the tasks, schedules them, and provides mechanism for inter-task communication and synchronization. Whereas dual-core programming in ESP32 means you can run two different tasks or programs on the two cores of the ESP32 processor, core 0 and core 1. This way, each core can do its own job at the same time. Multitasking in ESP32, on the other hand, refers to the ability to run multiple tasks concurrently on a single core using free RTOs or other scheduling mechanisms. So, free RTOs is used to manage multiple tasks running on one core. Dual core programming lets you run two different tasks at the same time on the two cores. Multitasking means you can have several tasks running on each core managed by free RTOs or other tools. I won't make things too complicated so that you can easily understand everything. Today, we will only cover the dual cores, core 0 and core 1. In upcoming videos, we will talk about free RTOs and multitasking. So, without any further delay, let's get started. By default, Arduino sketches run on ESP32's core 1. We can easily find out which function is running on which core by using the export get core ID function. As you can see, I have used this function in both wide setup and wide loop. Let's upload this program to confirm the default core of the ESP32. If you're not able to see the core information for the setup function, then simply press the reset button. You can see both the setup and loop functions are running on the ESP32 core 1. The ESP32 microcontroller comes with two cores, core 0 and core 1. This means you can run two tasks simultaneously on separate cores. This feature is useful when you want to split your workload such as running time-sensitive tasks on one core while handling less critical tasks on the other. A task in the context of programming is a single, independent piece of code that performs a specific function. Each task can run on either core 0 or core 1. Let's start with a basic example where both tasks blinking an LD and printing a message to the serial monitor run on a single core. Let me tell you this variant of the ESP32 has its onboard LED connected to GPIO5. In this example, both the LED blinking task and the message printing task are executed on core 1 by default. The loop function runs these tasks one after the other meaning that the LED blinks and then a message is printed to the serial monitor. Let's upload this program. Since both tasks are running on the same core, so that's why they are executed sequentially, the microcontroller completes the LED blink and then moves on to printing the message. I modified the program and now the LED blinking task runs on one core and the message printing task runs on the other core. These lines create two variables to keep track of the tasks. Task 1 and Task 2 will store information about the tasks we create. The ESP32 onboard LD is connected to the GPIO5. The setup function runs once when the ESP32 starts up. Next, I activated the serial communication and selected 115200 as the baud rate and I set the LD as output. Next, I created two tasks, each assigned to a different core. This function creates a new task and assigns it to a core. This is the function that will run as task 1. This is a name for the task. This is the amount of memory stake size task 1 will use. It is measured in words. This means no extra input is passed to task 1. This sets task 1's priority. A higher number means higher priority. 
This saves information about task 1 in the task 1 variable. This tells the ESP32 to run task 1 on core 0. This function creates another task. This is the function that will run is task 2. This is a name for the task. These three lines are exactly the same. This saves information about task 2 and the task 2 variable. This tells the ESP32 to run task 2 on core 1. The loop function is empty because the tasks are running on separate cores. This defines what task 1 does. This creates an infinite loop. All these other instructions are used to on and off the LED at 500 milliseconds. Similarly, task 2 sends the electronic clinic message to the serial monitor at a delay of 1000 milliseconds. Let's upload this program. You can clearly see that the two tasks are not connected. The LED is blinking on its own and the message is printing separately. In the previous example, when both tasks were running on the same core, the LED would blink first and then the message would print. This happened because the tasks were executed one after the other. But now, with both tasks running on the separate cores, they run independently of each other. Let's take a look at another example. This time, we'll make the two LEDs blink at different speeds. One LED is connected to the ESP32 GPIO2 and the other LED is connected to the GPIO4. For the connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. I have slightly modified the previous code. This time, I'm not using the onboard LED. Instead, I'm using external LEDs that are connected to pins 2 and 4 of the ESP32. The rest of the code is the same. We are just turning one LED on and off every 200 milliseconds and the other LED on and off every one second. I've already uploaded this program, so let's go ahead and watch this in action. Now, you can see even more clearly how we can run two different tasks on two different cores independently. Running tasks independently doesn't mean we can't link them together. In fact, we can also make the cores communicate with each other. Let's do it. For this example, you can see I have also added a potentiometer. Its metal leg is connected to the ESP32 GPIO36, which may also be labeled as A0 or VP. Whereas the two LEDs are still connected to the GPIOs 2 and 4. For the inter-task communication between the two cores, core 0 and core 1, I want this LED and potentiometer to be on core 1 and the other LED on the core 0. So, what I want to do is I want to control the delay time of this LED from core 1. So, we will read this potentiometer on the core 1 and then send its value to the core 0 to increase and decrease the delay time. Instead of using potentiometer, you can use any other analog or digital sensor. This time for inter-core communication, I also defined a Q handle which allows core 1 to send the potentiometer value to core 0. In the setup function, I also created a queue that can hold one integer value which will be used to pass the potentiometer value from core 1 to core 0. This checks if a new potentiometer value is available in the queue. If a new value is available, it updates the delay time. On core 1, we read the potentiometer and map its value from 50 to 1000 milliseconds. Using this line of code, we send the potentiometer value to core 0. I have already uploaded this program, so let's go ahead and watch the inter-task communication between two cores on the ESP32 in action. This LED and potentiometer are on core 1 and the other LED is on core 0. By using this potentiometer, I can control the on and off time of the LED on core 0. As you can see, the other LED keeps turning on and off every one second. By using Core 0 and Core 1, you can make amazing projects. For example, you can use Bluetooth on one core and Wi-Fi on the other. Or you can use Bluetooth for short-range communication on one core and LoRa transceiver modules for long-range communication on the other core. You can use these cores in a myriad of different ways. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.